The media, of course, continues to play its expected role in covering what's happening over in Israel. Uh, most recently, we've been talking from the beginning of this whole conflict about how Hamas has been using hospitals in Gaza as their terrorist operations base bases. And that's certainly the case at Al-Shifa Hospital. And Israel went in to try to take care of that problem and did so, I think, in the most responsible, judicious way you could ever ask someone to go into enemy headquarters um, and then document it all. I mean, it's great that they document everything. I was just thinking like, what a pain in the ass for Israel to because they know everybody's gonna make up lies about them to have to videotape every single thing they do, right? To so show you, look at all the machine guns we found underneath the cardiac resuscitation machine, right? Like, look at, and they did. They put it all out. And yet, and yet, Carol, um, the international media doesn't seem to care. The World Health Organization called the incursion into this hospital totally unacceptable. Hospitals are not battlegrounds. And then my pal, yeah, except when Hamas makes them so. And then my pal, Alan Dershowitz, he pointed out that Human Rights Watch, which is nothing of the kind, (laughs) it is not what it sounds like, they're outraged. Their headline on this was unlawful Israeli hospital strikes worsen health crisis. Um, this was actually on the other hospital um, nightmare, I think. But in any event, they, they of course, paint uh, the Israeli military's behavior terrible. And what they say is the Israeli military's repeated, apparently unlawful attacks on medical facilities, personnel, and transport are further destroying the Gaza Strip's healthcare system and should be investigated as war crimes. Contrast that with 2017, when it was America battling in Mosul against ISIS. And we had to go in and take out a hospital that ISIS was using as a headquarters. And there, Human Rights Watch could see the, they could see the truth. They said Islamic State, also known as ISIS fighters, who had occupied a a Mosul hospital for two years, put staff and patients at risk of attack. Yes, Exactly. But when it's Jews, it's very hard for Human Rights Watch to see the contrast, Carol. They're really struggling to see who's actually the victim and who's the victor. What, what's interesting is that it wasn't even, you know, an open secret that Al-Shifa Hospital was used as a Hamas center. It's been, I didn't even think it was a secret at all. It, it, it was something that I think so many people knew. I, I would not call myself a Mideast expert. I know quite a lot about it, but I, you know, I, I leave the expert label to other people. And I had heard about the command center under it. There have been comedians over the years who have made jokes about it. It is not a secret at all that this was going on. And so what I don't get is the conspiracy theories around it. Like, oh, no. No, there isn't. And so why would Israel spend all this time there? Why would they put soldiers on the ground to go inside this hospital if they don't believe that it has weapons, if they don't believe that there's a chance that hostages are being held there, if they don't believe that there's a command center? Why would they waste all this time? Who is this benefiting? Make your conspiracy theories make sense is all I'm looking for here. And so, so (laughs) far, none of them do. And I don't understand the argument that Israel is just what wanted to hurt um, people who were staying in the hospital, they could have, you know, bombed the hospital if, if that was the case, right? And they don't do that. So the fact that Israel does these really careful incursions where they do document everything is a real testament to the IDF and a real testament to the way that Israel conducts itself. Yeah, even Human Rights Watch, which I just mentioned, look, this is all found in the hospital, um, admitted in 2007 that Hamas had fired at its Palestinian rival from within this mm-hmm. hospital. They knew very right. well, but they've weirdly forgotten it all um, now that it's Israel on the other side of it. Here's the BBC trying to report on um, what happened there. Watch in SOT 10. At this moment, we are hearing from Reuters that is reporting that Israel, it says its forces are carrying out an operation against Hamas in Gaza's Al-Shifa hospital. And they are targeting people, including medical teams, as well as Arab speakers. Once again, we are hearing from Reuters that Israel says that its forces are carrying out an operation against Hamas in that hospital that we had just heard of. They are targeting is Arab speakers, as well as some of the medical staff there. 
Unbelievable. And now uh, an apology from the BBC. A BBC News, uh, as it covered <coughs> initial reports that Israeli forces has entered Gaza's main hospital. We said that medical teams and Arab speakers were being targeted. This was incorrect and misquoted a Reuters report. We should have said IDF forces included medical teams and Arabic speakers for this operation. So we apologize for this error, which. Yeah, pretty big one. Pretty big one, Bethany. And by the way, they don't make the anchor who said all the false stuff do the apology, which is how it's supposed to be done. It's weird how the errors always go in one direction. There's never, they they never, yeah, it, it's weird how it always happens. But I mean, if Israel, Israel is being continually accused of genocide. If they were interested in genociding, they're actually very bad at it. It would have yeah. been a lot easier if they had just bombed the hospital. And instead, they went in and they documented everything they saw. And what I'm seeing from uh, pro-Palestine and progressive journalists is like mocking what they're finding because somehow they didn't find enough guns. They didn't find enough magazines. They didn't find enough RPGs. As if they didn't have five weeks warning that their headquarters was about to be invaded by the IDF. And so this idea that like, okay, yes, the, the hospital did have some guns, but not enough to justify Israel coming in. Like, <laughs> how many guns precisely does it take for this to be considered a military base? Apparently, right. five weeks of, of notice before they start clearing out all the good stuff absolves them of the fact that they were using this. And this is, again, like what Carol said, it's not even an open secret. It's just an open thing that is understood within everyone on the ground. People who were working in the NGO world in Gaza understood that ambulances were being used to transport Hamas fighters, that orange vests that are normally worn by paramedics were being worn by Hamas fighters. Like they are using Israeli, they're, I'm sorry, they're using Palestinians as human shields. That's what they do. And one of my favorite clips recently was Al Jazeera was interviewing Wait, we have people it. in the hospital. I know yes. what you're going to say. Stand by. I'm going to run it and then I'll, I'll give the, you the floor. Sad 11. Sad 11. It was not one house that was bombed. An entire compound was erased. Over 15 or 20 houses. Is this a humane act? No, this is a criminal act. As for the resistance, they come and hide among the people. Why are they hiding among the people? They can go to hell and hide there. Okay, so for the listening audience, Al Jazeera, well, Bethany, you can explain what just happened, but it's amazing, the propaganda by Al Jazeera. Go ahead. Al Jazeera interviewed that man who was critical of Hamas for hiding among the people. And what did that Al Jazeera man. reporter did? Yes. What did that Al Jazeera reporter do? He walked away quickly and tried to find another guest because what he was saying was awfully inconvenient for their narrative. Yes, And then the man, Hamas, then the Palestinian man kicks the Al Jazeera reporter a couple of times. He's pissed. He wants his mic pissed. back. He's speaking truth and Al Jazeera mm-hmm. won't let him. Well, I mean, he's risking his life by doing that. At least let him have the floor for 30 seconds. Yeah, exactly. But, you know. the, the media is disgusting. My God, they're so corrupt. If you like, there's so many examples. And that BBC thing, Carol, is really the BBC, honestly, they need yeah. to do better. They have the resources to do better. I think everyone knows to take a Reuters report on anything involving the Mideast with a hefty grain of salt. They should know that. And they would if it weren't for the fact that they share the same bias. I, I don't I just don't wait for any of these media outlets to ever be fair to, you know, not just Israel, but to conservatives or anybody who doesn't walk the extremely leftist line. Um, I think we have a real problem with our media. Look what happened that they were New York Times and other outlets were using people who were actually embedded with Hamas on October 7th. I think that that's just that step too far. And I think that we've gotten to a place where we expect the worst from the media and they deliver. And the BBC is just, you know, another example of that. They've always been anti-Israel. They're pretty anti-America. They're pretty anti anything that isn't specifically left liberal. And that's yep. just the way it goes. It's, a, I mean, it's a pretty big mistake to say that the IDF is in that hospital targeting Palestinians, mm-hmm. targeting Arabic speakers. And then you find out, Oh wait, it actually they just brought people in with them who could translate and help them communicate what they were about to do and move. That's actually what they were doing. Uh yeah. but no. No, they got that a little bit wrong. 
and then didn't have the balls to put the, the, the anchor who made the mistake on camera to apologize for her error, which honestly, these errors get people killed. These are big errors. They need to be far more careful. Well, as autumn settles in, the Christmas decorations have already made their grand entrance. But before allowing the shopping stress to take over, take a moment to think about this. Many families are choosing to embrace experiences and family gifts instead of the frenzy of individual shopping. Now is the perfect time to order the ultimate family gift, a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas. A Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas combines the benefits of a hot tub with those of an exercise pool. Michael Phelps Swim Spas come in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard, even if it's a small one. Installation can take less than a day, and since it's heated, you can use it year-round in any climate. Michael Phelps Swim Spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. Order yours today. Go to masterspas.com, put in the promo code MK to save $1,000 on a Michael Phelps Swim Spa or $500 on a Master Spas hot tub. That's masterspas.com, promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.